Well, hey, ladies. We went speeding past my two minutes. So I just want to say welcome to everybody again. And I think the ladies on Zoom, uh, I want to welcome you. Tell you what, I just wanted to mention the missions conference. Um, I know that there were a lot of people who helped with that, a lot of things uh, done with hospitality and, uh, uh, you know, our banquet was nice, but listening to the missionaries, we really had a wonderful time, especially with the Carnes family. We got to spend more time with them than probably some of the others. And so that was really special. Um, got to know the kids. Uh, so we had a great time. The week I think was a real blessing and I thought to myself we really need to hear more of that um, preaching teaching and hoping that the Lord would call somebody out of our church into full-time Christian work um, that would be great uh, I did want to say we've got some prayer requests and I think we'll take uh, some time at the end to pray but I did want to share this you know Jim Steele has been really uh, hanging in the balance over the last weekend, but we did get word uh, that his daughter, I believe, or Anne, I think it was his daughter who talked with him, and he could only say one word, and the one word he said was stable, <laughs> okay, so that was encouraging, like, um, you know, he'll come through. We, I haven't heard anything else yet, um, so, but that was the last thing I heard that was encouraging, um, and then uh, for those of you who know Mary Lynn and Paul LeDuc, mm -hmm. Paul's sister passed away. Mm -hmm. Her name was Pat Allen. And just this morning, we learned Tiffany Lightship's mother died too, so passed away. So um, if wow. Tiffany Lightship's mother, um, she passed away. So we want to keep these people, you know, near to our hearts. And uh, if you think of it, send them, drop them a note, drop a card. Uh, to them. And then uh, also, if you want to think about it, let me know. We need a door watcher for next week. But I also want to say next week, I've asked Marlo to teach. So she'll be your teacher next week. Pray for her because she'll be doing Wednesday night and Thursday morning. And I encouraged the ladies last night. I said, do your best. Make sure you work even harder for Marlo. So she doesn't have to pull, pull teeth to get you know, comments or people involved. So, um, so she'll uh, be doing that. I really appreciate it. Will and I uh, will be out of town. We're actually going somewhere with uh, uh, Larry Robbins and Karen, and we'll be spending a couple days together. So, is Marla Pastor Gets wife? Yes, okay. she's right back here. Doesn't help me. I know, <laughs> <laughs> but I wanted to let you know she's in the room. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it was kind of funny. I was sitting next to uh, Doris in church and we had a little technical difficulty and I leaned over and I was trying to uh, you know, whisper. I realized she could, can't hear me and I can't speak loudly enough. You yes, aids. yes, because I had her hearing aids in my hands and then I, I reached to grab a card and to write a note and I thought, no, that's dumb. <laughs> okay. But, and Doris is always so on it. So, but anyway, we'll tell you what, we have a lot to talk about today, a, lot, a long lesson to get through. So let's go ahead and uh, bow our heads and pray and ask the Lord to be with us here. Linda. Oh, yes. And Linda, Linda Antic. And also uh, John L. Feltis. Let's keep him in our prayers too. Um, we have a long list of people. Um, usually I have the, um, the Wednesday night prayer list. I don't have that right now. Um, um, no, we're not going to pray through it. I, we just hand it out. Um, well, tell you what, um, uh, what, if you would, oh, Marlo, are you on your way? I'm on my way. Okay. Thank you. Well, anyway, let's go ahead and pray just to open our class. We'll get to our class and we'll uh, probably uh, save 10, 10 to 15 minutes at the oh, end to pray. Oh, yes. And I, this morning I wrote down all my little uh, notes, but um, <coughs> Karen brought a box of tomatoes fresh mm -hmm. from the vine. Mm 
So if you would like to grab a tomato on your way out today, thank Karen for that. Okay. All righty, let's go ahead and pray and get started. Dear Father, we thank you so much for your goodness to us. We thank you for watching over us and guarding us. And oh, Father, we probably will never know till we reach heaven how often you have uh, protected us, how you uh, guided us away from harm, how you uh, just had our lives in your hands. And Lord, we're so glad that we can trust you and count on you and all these things. Oh, Father, we do just pray you'd be with us today as we um, go into our class. We pray that you would bless our conversation, bless our study together, and that we would be encouraged by it. And Lord, we have this list, Lord, of people, not just names on paper, but people that we love and care for. And we just pray that you would uh, be with us today. We do want to pray for Linda Antic. Oh, Father, we know she's struggling with lymphoma, leukemia, and, and she's facing a bone marrow transplant. And so, Father, I pray that you would give her grace, that you would help her, that you would strengthen her. And Father, all the illnesses, the infirmities that she faces, that you would just strengthen her through it and give the medical personnel wisdom as they deal with Linda. Lord, we just pray you'd be with her even today uh, as she may come home from the hospital, but we pray that you would help them make the best decisions for her. We thank you for Jim Steele that within his own self, he feels he's stable. Uh, we just pray that you would strengthen him, help him to pull through this wrestling match with COVID. Oh Lord, we just pray that you would uh, help him and be with Anne and comfort her and strengthen her and Mark too, their son. And Lord, we also want to pray for John L. Feltis. We know that his struggle is great. And so we pray for you to just comfort hearts and help them as they get through and dealing with his health issues as well. And Lord, we think of those today, uh, Tiffany Lightship, who has suffered a great loss, uh, losing her mother. Lord, we think of Paul LeDuc, his loss of losing a sister. But Lord, I, I don't know all their spiritual conditions, but you do and trust that these folks are with you. Oh Lord, we look to you now and just pray you'd be with us. Help us, Lord, to commit our way to you today. And Lord, that you would direct us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Did I mention we need a door watcher at the end? <laughs> okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Thank you all for your prayers for Ellen and I. We obviously made it. I'm <laughs> okay, that's right. <laughs> oh, we had a wonderful trip, and both of us are very happy with what happened, you know, visiting our families and everything. Gotcha. Okay. Well, two, that's good. Two old ladies down the road. That's a little scary. Right. <laughs> with the truckers. But we that's have right. No problems. We okay. We'll tell you what, I, I, and I forgot to pray at the end of class. Let's remember to pray. Actually, mm -hmm. let's go ahead and pray again. Karen uh, Price, she's not here this morning because she has a heart catheterization this morning and uh, in fact it was scheduled for 10 o'clock and so uh, let's go ahead and pray for her we remember that it was a heart catheterization that caused all the problems the doctor severed a major artery in her heart she flatlined three or four times to the hospital she ended up with a heart transplant so going into a, this test for her is a challenge so since she's in it right now, can I ask someone to pray for her? Sally, would you mind? Go ahead. Dear Jesus, we come to you on behalf of our sister Karen. You know all about this. We place her in your care, and we pray that you will touch the hands and the mind of everyone who comes in contact with her. Protect her, shield her, deliver her, strengthen her, May she be a wonderful witness to those who are working with her. Take care of Karen, we pray. 
we give her to you, knowing that she is in good hands, in the great physician's hands. We love her and we love you, and we trust you. We have faith that you will take care of Karen for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In fact, that's one of the reasons why I think we've uh, had this trouble, because Karen is usually on and she does a co-host. I think, isn't that right, Skip? She uh, yes. she does a co-host, so she's out this morning. Yeah, if, yeah, I need to learn to do that so we don't have to bug you guys. Um, but tell you what, let's go ahead and get started. First of all, last or uh, two weeks ago now, we had lesson one, which really was a, a, a lesson on, you've got the kingdom of God, and then you've got the area, the domain, the kingdom of Satan and the differences. Okay, so the question is, just as a matter of review, what is God's, God's objective in his working with his people? What does he want us to be? Holy. holy, that's right. The holiness of God. He wants his people to be a holy people because the scripture says, First Peter, be holy for I am holy. So he wants us to be set apart for his use, his service. So what's the objective for Satan? Transgender bathrooms. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid that's probably about right. Um, <laughs> Yeah, along with everything else. So for the, for the unsaved person, what's his objective that he wants to do? Keep them unsaved. Yeah, keep them unsaved. He does not want them to hear the gospel. He does not want them to understand the gospel. He doesn't want them to understand the love of God, how much he loves and cares for them, how he gave his son for him. So he wants to shut down the gospel. And if for anyone who doesn't think there's a real adversary you just have to look at the last year and a half mm -hmm. in america and how many gospel opportunities have been shut down mm -hmm. as a result of the mandates the laws the things that have been put forward because of covid um so that's satan's goal uh for the unsaved sally but for the person who has been saved yes he still comes at them Yes. And one of the best books I've ever read about how to, as a Christian, but a defeated Christian, the Screw Tape Brothers. Yes. C.S. Yeah. Lewis. Gotcha. And that's a wonderful book that reveals the tricks. Right. Of Satan. Of Satan. And the scripture mm -hmm. says what? That we shouldn't be ignorant of his right. devices. Right. Uh, but for the saved person, he wants them to disobey mm -hmm. they he wants them to disregard uh god's uh working in their lives and uh to turn their backs on him if he can get a christian person to turn their back on god to uh ignore him then then he thinks he's won the day um tell you what but this second lesson is talking about being equipped for battle um, I have to say, I, I knew my son was going to show up and I was thinking about asking him how he was equipped for um, combat. And as he hit the ground, uh, you know, he, I know one of his stories in his being equipped for battle, I'm going to shut, no, I, I'll shut mine off because that.
Hey Heather, this is Deb. We're li we're listening or trying to listen to uh, the Bible study. Um, and Rick has now left because he thought everything was set up. But when Lisa turned her computer off, we lost audio again. When she turns her computer off, she can't oh. read our chat saying that Got we it. lost video. Now we have. Oh, okay. Now she just now came back on. <laughs> okay. Um, told her. Okay. 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 Hey, uh, Skip, okay, if you're listening, we have an echo. Maybe we need to just turn this down or turn that one off. Marlo, could you go get Skip? Okay, I'm going to, ladies, Deb and Frida and Nancy, uh, I'm going to mute out for just a minute. Hopefully, Skip will get us back online because we've got a terrible echo in our classroom. on doing this. I've done it a couple years ago, but I need a review. <laughs> okay. You're on that. Okay. Uh, ladies on Zoom, can you hear us? Yes. Oh, good. I think, and, and we are not in an echo chamber. <laughs> okay, so we're on the bottom of 19. It's talking about listing any weapons you think you may have in your spiritual armory uh, that will enable you to fight against the world, the flesh, and the devil. So what are some of these weapons that God has give us, given us in a spiritual sense. Anyone want to share your answers on that? Karen? I, I put prayer and authority against the devil only through Jesus Christ. Okay. That's just some of them that I thought of. Gotcha. Prayer? Absolutely. Uh, anything else? The Bible. The Word of God. Who said that? Josie? Yeah, the Word of God. Absolutely. Uh, what else? Just plan of righteousness. Our, yeah, that's right. Go to Ephesians chapter 6 God and you'll get the God. armor of God. Right. Okay, so uh, what else do we have? The breastplate of righteousness, Luan well, Memory verses. Memory verses, yes, which is related to the word of God, but this is hiding it in our hearts so that when we come up against something, yeah, we can go right out. One of the first Bible verses I memorized was, Psalm 119 and yeah, That's I can't get it. One. 111, okay. which is, um, I will hide thy word in my heart that I might not sin against God. God. Did I get the reference right on that? Yes, verse Psalm, 11 is right. Uh, one, 119. 119. That's good. I'm glad I got that. Okay, that because that was one of the first. I'm glad it's still in there. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but that meant a lot to me. So if that was a defensive weapon what we know in the word of God. We'll talk about that a little later. What about the gospel? Um, our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. What about truth? Um, these things, faith, truth, righteousness, all of those, those are weapons that God has given to us, not as the world thinks of weapons exactly. Um, but let's talk more about it later. Yes, do The authority of Jesus. Authority of Jesus. That and, and could you explain that a little further? Well, his victory on the cross. Okay. So we can claim that victory against Satan. That's right. Very true. Okay. Faith, well, prayer, fellowship. This yes. Is, this is a good part of our armor, our, our defensive weapons, meeting together. Yes. Building each other up. And you know, and the Bible says what about gathering together as we see the day approaching? Forsake not. Forsake, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is, but so much the more as you see the day approaching. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, our fellowship, our coming together, um, it says we need each other. We will need each other more as time goes on and as, as we see 
uh, the day approaching when the Lord may come, when the tribulation period may start. We're already seeing, you know, questions we had back in the 70s when I was in high school, uh, late 70s. Uh, you know, we'd read some of those things in Revelation. We'd think a mark of the beast. How in the world? Or a global economic system? You know, we, you know, we thought, how can these things be? And you think it's way off, maybe centuries away. And now it's like, oh, I get it. This is how that can happen. Okay, oh, we're not far from those things. A chip, a mark, um, an identification, but you can't buy or sell without it. Isn't that what they're kind of trying to do with your masks? Practicing. Yeah, it almost seems like a precursor to something that's not good. That's uh, the but, Bitcoin and all of that stuff, and they're going to take money away eventually. Yeah, it's we've heard everything money. going to cashless. So we could go on and on, but the idea of fellowship, <coughs> of, of needing each other, that's a helpful thing. Angels. Um, angels. So I live, I have to walk down a long hall uh -huh. to get to the lobby to get out of the building. Mm-hmm. And so many of the doors are decorated with witches and skeletons. For Halloween. And, and I pray, Lord, shield me. Keep me surrounded by angels that none of that evil. And it's they say, well, it's just good fun. No, it isn't. It's not good fun. Yeah. <laughs> it's demonic. Right. And I That's pray for <laughs> angels to protect me from okay. those right. things. Uh, although the difference between a spiritual weapon and an angel would be we can ask the Lord to send, I, I ask the Lord to put guardian angels around my two, particularly two grandsons, Wyatt and Jack, because they live in Montana. They have mountain lions, grizzly bears, wow. coyotes, you know, they have wolves, the whole gamut of wild animals around them. And often I pray for them, Lord, please. And Wyatt loves to wander. Oh. Okay, he he just he's not afraid of anything, mm -hmm. and so off he goes. And, you know, he doesn't uh, think well, so they much. They do spiritual warfare in their realm, and they can do spiritual warfare in our realm. Right, but the difference, what I was going to say, if we have a spiritual <laughs> weapon, what does that imply? That it's our weapon. It's something we control, where we can't control an angel. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure if weapon would be the right. Thing, but I get that we get the message. Yeah. Okay, what you're trying to say. But let's go ahead and answer this uh, question on the top of 20. If you're a woman who's being called to fight spiritual battle, battles, where will you get the inner strength you need for such battles? And if, if anyone would like to just share from these verses, if, how many of you have actually done your homework? I wanted. Yay. Okay, that's pretty good. Okay, so then. What are some of your ideas for this? And if you want to read the verse, that's fine. Anyone? Someone, someone you want to answer? the rock of your salvation, mm -hmm. open your Bible. And for me, I sat there for over an hour trying to figure out what more do I need to put in here? Because I think I'm going the wrong way, but I'm not so sure. Um, so the okay. Lord, to me, is when you see things happening, and it comes upon you, and there on, I mean, I mean, I only have one thing that I see on the, you know, all the stuff that I'm getting through the mail and all that stuff. Okay. And it's awful. It's like I don't even want to touch it. No. Throw it away. Okay. So, Some of those things. But let's but get. I, I really appreciate that. Okay. At our age, we really need to take care of our families that are younger because they're really getting hit. I believe that. Yes, Mary. Want me to read the verse and then? Sure, go ahead. In the day when I cried out, you answered me and made me bold with strength in my soul. And my other translation said he encouraged us with strength. So I wrote down when we pray and ask God, he gives us strength as encouragement. That's right. When we pour our heart out to him, when we cry unto him, he strengthens us. Where? In our soul. Have you ever experienced, I'm sure you have, just weakness where you just don't have the strength or you don't have the the umpa, the inner inner drive to uh, tackle 
a project or respond <coughs> well to something. But here it says, when we pour our hearts out to God, he'll give us the strength we need in our soul. He's not talking about physical strength. Um, you know, I mean, I can pray and cry out to the Lord, although it may affect my my attitude, the attitude of my mind and heart can drastically affect my inner strength. Um, there, you know, I've had many moments of uh, weakness over the last few years. And I'll tell you what, the attitude of my mind and heart made a huge difference. And that's where, I, again, the body of believers could come together because we can encourage each other. And sometimes we gain strength in the inner person in order to move forward and do the things that are right, have the right responses and so forth. But we cry to the Lord. He's the one who strengthens us. Uh, someone else. We've got three other verses here. I like Isaiah 26, uh, actually three and four. Uh, we can pick those verses up. Let me get there. Isaiah 26, 3 and 4. Oops. If I can grab that. I'm trying to hold this pen. It's not helping me. Okay, 26, 3 and 4. I, I think many of you probably memorized uh, 26, 3. That will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee because, because he trusts. In thee. So our peace comes when we put our trust in God. Uh, trust ye in the Lord forever. Get this, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. Mm -hmm. You know, we've been with a lot of people who passed away. Um, it's just part of our work, you know, when you're in a church and you have a church family. Um, but I'll never forget. Um, Ellis, what was his last name? It, it, it would escape me right now. But this man was amazing. He had a lung disease. And um, he had to go into the hospital. And it was clear that he would have to live the rest of his life with this huge oxygen mask on his face. He was in his 80s. But I remember they decided that they were going to take the oxygen mask off. So we went to the hospital. So we were in the room with him. His wife was there. His family was there. Some of his closest friends uh, were there. And he was saying goodbye to everybody. Like he was just going to Estes Park for the day, Aww. you know, or, or leaving. And so he, he just with tears going down his cheeks, he just looked at people. I love you. And he shook their hand. And the thing that amazed me when he shook my hand, there was such strength in his hand when he said goodbye. And uh, we'll never forget it. So after he shook everyone's hand in the room and hugged and uh, said his goodbye, he just laid back on the pillow. We started singing hymns. The nurse came in, took the mask off. He was gone within 10 to 15 minutes. And... But I never will forget the strength that that man had, mm -hmm. the inner strength to tell everyone how much he loved them and could just say goodbye and trust the Lord enough that he could lay back on that pillow and just expect to be with the Lord in uh, a few minutes. Mm -hmm. That's what he did. There was inner strength that allowed him to do that. Uh, there are those who'd be bitter. What do you think that picture might have looked like if there was just someone very, very bitter about having a lung disease? What do you think? It wouldn't have been the same scenario at all. They would have been angry. Angry. That's Why right. Me? Uh, Why me? Right. Why not you? <laughs> so, but trust in the Lord forever. For in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. And then Isaiah 40, 29, he gives power to the faint and to them that have no might, he increases their strength. And again, it's our mental outlook 
can affect our body. We never want to forget that. Um, that's really a truth. I think each of us, we could probably, uh, probably tell a story about when that happened in our lives. Um, so inner strength. And I had on a personal note, Psalm 138, 8. And I'm going to pick that up real quick. Psalm 138, 8. Okay, 28, 38, 8. The Lord will perfect. Here's something to give us hope and strength. The Lord will perfect that which concerns me. Your mercy, O Lord, endures forever. Forsake not the works of your own hands. Mm -hmm. So whatever we're going through, God is working his perfection in us. And uh, that's a wonderful promise to have. Tell you what, before we move on, um, any other thoughts about inner strength? Thoughts about inner strength, anyone? If not, go ahead, Marlo. Well, the verse that follows in Isaiah 40, um, the next two verses says, even the youth shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted, and but those who wait, wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles, and they shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. That's wonderful. Um, yeah. Let me ask you this question. I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit. What's it look like? What's it mean to wait on the Lord? They that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Are you asking me? Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's uh, not interfering. Um, um, there's scripture that says to be still and know that I am God. And that's a hard thing to do. <laughs> um, and um, we, we try to be still. Um, and, um, but our, our um, sinful nature wants to intervene and take charge and think we know what to do because we don't want to wait. Right. We have a time frame physically in our mind and we need to remember God has a bigger purpose and a plan and it's not necessarily in our time frame. Gotcha. That's, that's hard. It's hard. Yes, for sure. Marian? When I was in the hospital in May for 10 days and I was so sick, and I kept praying, and I wanted the Lord to take care of it like that. <laughs> and I was talking to a friend of mine on the phone, and I said, I just don't understand why. Mm -hmm. And she said, Marianne, God has a plan. He has people that need to see you react mm -hmm. to this in a godly way. Mm -hmm. Wait on the Lord. He's got you. <laughs> okay. And that was... When Some, I was running to the potty every 10 seconds. That was not right. No. That was difficult. But it really taught me to do that waiting to say, okay, Lord, I've prayed, I've laid it out in front of you, your time, not mine. Which right. is super hard, but right. Yep. To wait on the Lord is to wait. Wait for him. And don't get ahead of him. In but, our day and age, when we expect everything to happen Dance. now yes. that's exactly. this is one of the greatest traps the devil has ever come up with yeah we don't want to wait right. waiting takes patience and i don't know anyone named patience <laughs> yeah. you know now that you mention it i don't hear of anybody naming their child patience <laughs> <That's anymore. right. laughs> waiting is okay. not in our nature anymore. you know well that's very true in fact it seems like the most efficient Quickly, you can get things done, then you, you're the winner. Um, yeah. Lord, Fast food. patience and give it to me right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You don't, you don't ask him patience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, 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 Joe. Yeah, 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 yeah. Kathy? Yeah. Well, I definitely agree with everything that people said about waiting. And it also, I think it has an aspect of when you have your Bible open and you're reading his word and you're praying so he's speaking to you and you're speaking to him to linger in his presence mm -hmm. that there's an aspect of waiting on the lord to just linger there and not be in a hurry right yeah that's a good thing too yeah. very good luana 
you skipped Psalm 144.1. Go ahead. And what are the fingers for battle? The, what are the fingers which teaches my hand to war and my fingers to fight? Um, you know, I looked at that. I didn't spend much time on it. But who's the author of that psalm, do you think? David. 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 And what was he known for? War. War and archery. And he played the harp? He, oh. Yeah, he played the harp. But... He, why couldn't he build the tabernacle or the or the temple? I mean, because there was blood on his hands. yeah, there was blood on his hands. He was a warrior. He actually fought all those battles. So I'm I'm thinking that that verse and let's let's go there. And if you guys have any uh, thoughts on that one, uh, but that that was my thought. Uh, he David needed to know how to be a warrior because he had enemies on every side. His own son rose up against him. Uh, so let's look at that. Verse one, blessed be the Lord, my strength, which teaches my hands to war. And what would that mean? His hands to war, literally how to use his sword, uh, how to, how to use his slingshot. You know, here's this, the guy writing this is a guy that killed Goliath. Um, the guy that chased out the Philistines, uh, the guy that, uh, had to run from his own uh, king because he was constantly being uh, fighted. But I'm not sure in my fingers to fight. Actually, does someone have that verse in a different translation? I'm out of, I'm in the King James. So I've got an old one here. So blessed be the Lord, my rock, who trains my hands for war and my fingers for battle, my rock and my fortress, my stronghold, gotcha. and my liver, my shield, and he who take refuge, who subdues the people. Right. He was in a lot of battles. So that one was my fingers to, what was it? For battle. battle. For battle. Okay, someone else? Strong's. I have strong on my Bible. Sure. And it says, it says the same sense of grasping. So learning how to grasp hold in the battle, maybe. That could be. Or grasp hold of all or the seize tools it, that we have. It, you know? Okay. But, and he goes on to say, remember his battles were physical yeah. and through his the faith that he had in fighting those physical battles we learn from uh, but he goes he's he's my deliverer he's my shield um and he in whom i trust mm -hmm. who subdued the people under me so he's talking about literal battle um in that section so in that other, i like that other translation my hands to war my fingers for battle. Yeah. Um, so in yeah. That, in that verse and in the Isaiah 26, my both I I underlined the word rock. Gotcha. Because it's in both of them, and you think about a rock of being strong, and it doesn't waver. It's not like don't build your house on the sand, but build your house on a rock, so that we can Solid. always trust that He's going to be there when we're battling gotcha. and give us the strength. Very good. Does that help? Mm -hmm. yes, I think. You. And how does that relate to uh, you are a woman who is being called to fight spiritual battles? <laughs> so in, gotcha. what does that mean in relation to us? Well, let's look at that. Um, uh, I, I shut my Bible too soon. Um, okay. So blessed be the Lord, my strength. Or you said your translation in some is rock. Mm -hmm. Okay. Blessed be the Lord, my strength, my rock. Well, he acknowledged in a real physical battle that God provided his strength, that he was his stability. When you think of a rock, think of some of these boulders that you can't move. Okay, they are in the ground. They are stable. Nothing's going to move them, uh, which reminds me of a New Testament verse, which says, what? Be ye what? Unmo steadfast, unmovable always abounding in the work of the Lord. So you've got this idea that he is our strength. He's our rock. And he teaches, taught David uh, to war, to fight. But he goes, my goodness, God is good. My fortress, a place I can go and find uh, safety. I don't know if you visited. I remember a castle we saw in Israel years ago called Belvoir. And uh, even when the Roman Empire came through, they devastated everything in their way. But the history behind Belvoir was that it was a castle that could not be penetrated. The Roman army could not defeat Belvoir. Wow. 
Wow. And um, so they finally made a deal with them. They would let the people go. Well, underneath Belvoir, they had tunnels that led a mile away from the castle. Um, but the interesting thing about Belvoir, I've shared before, I think, in one of our classes, that um, the person that held the shield, the shield was held by the left hand. And so the only way you could enter Belvoir was uh, by coming and exposing up to the front, uh, you know, gate, the big, what do you call those things? The big door. Okay. Okay. But they had archers. You could see still today the holes in the walls where the archers stood. And so they would have a clear shot at the left shoulder. And so what that would do, it would, it would drop the shield and the person would be defenseless. Okay, and so that was a good plan when they they actually built the uh, castle with that in mind. Uh, they couldn't be defeated. It was made of stone on the outside, so they couldn't burn it. Yes. Sure. I, I think in, in uh, answer to her question sure, go about ahead. a spiritual battle. Yes. I think one of the greatest um, tools we have is praise. Mm -hmm. And David used his fingers, and I realize this is talking about a physical battle, sure. but David used his fingers with his harp or whatever right. to praise God. And he'll tell you throughout different passages in Psalms, um, why am I so downcast? Put my hope in mm -hmm. God, God mm -hmm. and yet I will praise him. And, and <laughs> if you're in a spiritual battle, mm -hmm. that's what you do. You right. start praising God. Right. And you may not have a harp to play with your fingers, right. but you have tools, uh, radio, whatever. So, right. And that's that's right. That's, and, there's a little and paragraph this, right at the end yes. of that section that pretty yes. much answers it really well. Okay. The inner strength comes not from, and we're going to get to that, from self-confidence or positive thinking. If you've trusted Christ for salvation, you have within you the power for any difficulty you may face. And I'm thinking as we read about his physical battle, um, God is our high tower. He is our fortress. He is our rock. Uh, we, we have the spiritual battles. We, I don't, as far as I know, you don't have any physical battles, but we certainly have and can apply those physical things, knowing how he describes the Lord. Uh, Cause God was not a person. Uh, so He's ascribing things we can relate to, to our spiritual God. But tell you what, let's go on from here. And the question I want to ask is, what does the world tell us today about self-confidence or positive thinking? Um, what does the world tell us about strength, inner, inner strength, or any kind of strength? What do you think? Um, truth is relative to them. It's not the truth of God's word. They... They, are, they create their own truth. Right. That's right. Yeah. Okay. I so what you believe is what you believe, and anything yeah. you think goes, pretty much. It, isn't that the truth? Yeah. Well, if you so want to, you're seeing it more and more on anything. TV than ever. Pardon me, Gail? Um, yeah. 100, well, 144 is the thing, but 11 is what I circled. Rescue me from the cruel sword and deliver me from the hand of aliens everybody's talking about, whose mouths speak lies and whose right hand is a right hand of falsehood. And it's like, yeah, it's all over the TV. It's all over mm -hmm. people talking. They're switching things. They're doing yeah. them differently. I know. And as a truth seeker, it's hard to find truth today, it is. isn't it? It yeah. used to be we took so easily, so quickly, you know, Walter Cronkite, uh, you probably remember Walter Cronkite. Yeah. Whatever he said was the gospel truth. That's right. Okay, you didn't you didn't question whether Walter Cronkite was telling you something true or or false or giving an opinion rather than the news. Um, yeah. So, truth truth is relative. I think that's a great point. Um, but also, um, how you think well of yourself. You have to be an athlete. You have to be out there running, you know, jumping, or being absolutely ridiculous and crazy. Um, some of the things that you see on television, the ads and so forth, you think, where in the world did this come from? These people are from another planet. Okay, and so, so self-confidence. We don't want to be self-confident. We want our confidence to be 
in Christ, in the Lord, and what who he is, which we just read in Psalm 144. We want our confidence to be in him. That's for sure. Um, but I think we're not going to spend as much time because we spent a whole uh, year on uh, this next session, section. What is the source of this power uh, that we have, this inner strength? Where does it come from? The Holy Spirit. That's right. Um, we want to be, Ephesians says, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Again, when someone <coughs> has something within them and they have a goal, can you think of a person in history or someone you know who had great inner strength up against a lot of odds, but they just persevered? How did they do that? Can you think of anyone? Corey Ten Boom. Corey Ten Boom. Corey Ten Boom. Yeah. She um, was in a concentration camp. Yes. I mean, really a death camp. Mm -hmm. And uh, she persevered through it. Her, her sister Betsy didn't make it. Um, but Corey Ten Boom persevered and she got through. Someone else? Anne Frank. Anne Frank, same situation, the Jewish Holocaust during that time. And in her situation, she was martyred. She, or she was killed. I wouldn't yeah. say martyred. Um, what about some of our missionaries that we've um, read about? I loved reading about Mary Slessor, who was in Niger Nigeria, Africa. Um, she just persevered through everything. She had a walk with the Lord. I think she ended up raising, there was a, there was a custom where they would take little children and they'd just leave them out to die. If they were twins, they thought that was an evil omen. So they would take the twins out and they would die. So she would always go and rescue twins. She ended up raising something like 58 children. Okay. She had her, the, her, the first ones, Janie was the name of the first twin. I think she rescued. And that woman actually grew up and helped her uh, with raising these kids. She had help, but also I remember she's going down the river in a canoe and a hippopotamus shows up, you know, right beside her. So she only, she took a metal pan beside her and whacked him on the head, you know, and so off he goes, the hippopotamus, okay? So Mary Slessor, she was an incredible woman, or Gladys Elbaugh, who walked with a group of children uh, during some of the most um, awful times in China. She had a group of children, she persevered, um, she had a helper who died on the way, who was killed, who, trying to protect the children. Uh, they persevered. They had this inner strength that moved them forward. I, again, sometimes we want to throw our hands up and we want to quit. But God gives inner strength for us not to do that when we trust him, when we look to him. When I read the stories of David and I realize the odds he was up against, or just this week, I've been looking at judges and Gideon's army. It was a, a, an army of 300 that God whittled down. But they were up against an army of probably 140 some thousand people. And God discomfited it. God was their strength. They couldn't have done it without him. Only God could help him. Only uh, God. Elisa? So this, Elisa? Yes, go ahead. Um, I'm sorry, I couldn't quite catch... The missionary's last name, it was Mary what, and how do you spell it? Mary Slessor, S-L-E-S-S-O-R. Thank you. Okay. You bet. She's worth reading about. Um, and even how her life started as a missionary was amazing. But tell you what, so how does a person receive the Spirit? We've talked a lot about that. When we receive Christ into our life, uh, we are indwelt by the Spirit of God, which is an amazing thing that God would give us this wonderful gift of his Spirit to be present with us at all times. Um, and sometimes we don't always sense his presence. Maybe our sin will separate us and our God. Um, he's not going to respond readily when we're letting sin rule in our life. So we need to be really careful with that. Um Another person was uh, sure. that had a lot of endurance was uh, Louis Zambrini. I'm uh, not familiar. Who uh, was that? He was in that book, Unbroken. Oh, no. 
No. Okay. Gotcha. Oh, I think they made a movie about that. Yes, yes. I watched the movie. I didn't read the book. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Imagine was the yeah, one. that guy was unbelievably uh, persevering, yeah. for sure. Um, it takes an inner strength, though, to take our body to the height. I have to laugh. Uh, maybe some of you remember Ed Neese, his daughter, Shelby, and she was up at Camp Grace, and they were getting ready for camp. And they were working those kids hard and, uh, you know, mowing the grass, doing a lot of physical things uh, to get ready. And she said, I've been really tired. But she said, my dad told me who was an army ranger. Um, he always told me that when you think you're out of energy, you've got 40% more left. <laughs> 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 I have often, so Will and I often will have repeated that. We, I think we've got 40% more. <laughs> okay. Okay. So anyway, but in these next situations, uh, Luke 4, 1 through 2, it says, did the Holy Spirit, how did the Holy Spirit equip the persons in the following text for the difficulties they face? And for time's sake, I'm just going to say Luke 4, 1 through 2. We have Jesus who had been tempted in the wilderness. And it says, after 40 days ended in that passage. And so he'd already gone through 40 days of having Satan nipping at his heels, tempting him to do wrong every day. <coughs> um, after that part ended, it says he was hungry because he had fasted during those mm -hmm. days. I'm a, I'm so, and so when we talk about how, I'm sorry. So when we talk about how uh, Satan tempted him three times and he used the word of God, um, what did Satan do? He tried to tempt Jesus mm -hmm. when he was the most vulnerable, mm -hmm. when he was probably, <laughs> well, he was, scripture says he was hungry, but he'd probably been tired. He was probably worn flat out physically, his body. And that's when Satan struck at him. So here's the question I want to ask for each of you. So when are you the most vulnerable? When are you the most vulnerable? Can, have you ever thought about that? I think when you're really tired. When you're tired, I think as women, and my mother warned my husband before we were married. <laughs> he said, she told him, she's she's usually pretty even killed most of the time, but when she's tired, she can be really a grumpy person, you know, I, for whatever word she used. And that's probably proven true. I've tried to overcome it, but I get, and my sister's word, Audrey's word was snarky. I get snarky, you know. I remember before Audrey passed away, she, you know, she had a hard set of circumstances. But uh, she told me one day, she goes, you know, some some of the people around her made mistakes in how they took care of her. She goes, what would it help if I became snarky? <laughs> you know, okay. But I get snarky when I'm tired. Okay, I, so that's a vulnerable spot for me. What do you what do you encourage me to do? Um, enough I think rest that, that you're not tired. Take yeah. care of yourself. Yeah, take care of yourself. So, um, I like the one ups one in my Bible here. That when he and he said he ate nothing in those days, and when they were ended, he was hungry. And the devil said to him, "If you're the son of God, <laughs> command this stone to become bread." Not that. Amen. He can do it, man. <laughs> and Satan wouldn't have said that if he didn't know he could have done it. Done it. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, in any case, what, what was Jesus's response? Mm, we don't live by bread alone. That's, that's right. right. But by what? Every the word, word, that, word that, proceeds that proceeds from the mouth of God. God. Okay, so so he was vulnerable that way. So what about us? Kathy, I saw you shaking your head. Oh, I was thinking about the comments. It's like if you're tired or you're hungry or, or you're emotional about something. or I call them red flags in my life. It's like yeah. I go over my red flags because that's usually when I get attacked. Gotcha. Yeah. So sometimes I think, again, as women, we tend to be emotional 
at times, or sometimes somebody might say something that it, it was hurtful. And so those times were emotional or vulnerable to respond, to act maybe in the wrong way, um, for sure. So we want to be very careful and know this about ourselves. Okay, so, so know yourself in the sense, uh, know where your vulnerabilities are so that you can um, take it to the Lord if it's something that only he can do, help with. Uh, take it to him, pray, pour your heart out before him so that he can be your strength um, and ask him to uh, help overcome for me the snarkiness. You know, if I usually if I'm very tired, that is when I'll say something snarky or something I regret. Yeah. Um, like I shouldn't have said that. And then, oh, no, I now I've got to go apologize. And then I'll go, I'm not going to apologize right now. I'm going to go and wait. <laughs> okay. So sometimes it's like, if you're sick, oh, yeah. Sometimes Pardon me? if you're sick, some people will draw closer to God. And other times they might just start questioning. You right. Know, and, and be bitter. And say, yeah. Yes. Also, Linda. when you're under a lot of stress. Stress. You know, I have a book that's called Stress in the Woman's Body. And the things that go haywire in your body because of stress. <clears throat> Actually, there were three things uh, that I was told was written in a cancer treatment book. If you don't want cancer to return, okay, your diet, exercise, and stress reduction. Those are the three main causes, they say, uh, which makes sense of uh, cancer returning. So I told Will, I said, well, how, how am I gonna reduce stress? <laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> I'm not sure how to do that. <laughs> anyway, tell, tell you what, let's go on because uh, we have a lot to cover here. Uh, let's look at this next one. It says, uh, think of the firepower of man's weaponry. Grenades, tanks, bombers. This is the middle of page 21. These are capable of removing obstacles in any war. Romans 15, 13 speaks of the power of the Holy Ghost. The Greek word for power, dunamis, is the same root from which we get our word dynamite. The Holy Spirit dwells in us and is our source of dynamic power. I have to say, uh, when I read this paragraph again, I think of my son because he was in a combat zone. Uh, I told you he was in the helicopter and he's putting on lots of ammunition. He has to carry the medical pack along with the weaponry. <clears throat> So he, he gets to carry an extra, I think, 30 to 40 pounds. So if someone gets shot, then he tries to get to that person and help them. Uh, but anyway, in this particular time, uh, they, you know, they're in a helicopter. They drop a long rope down, and the helicopter hovers. You've probably seen this in movies. It hovers, and then the guys have to grab the rope, and they drop down carrying 120 pounds on their back. And they hit the ground and roll. The problem is they went in <coughs> toward evening, night, and you don't know how far from the ground you are. And so you let go of that rope. And, it, it, you know, you could be 10 feet off the ground or 5 feet or 15. You don't know until you get there. Yeah. <clears throat> so I think my son probably broke his back on that jump. jump. He didn't know. It. But they uh, hit the ground and... Uh, and, and as it turned out, I, he ended up being pinned, pinned down. And they were pinned there, I don't know, forever much time. But one of the guys, I don't know if Jim called in or another guy called in by radio, they needed support, air support. And so another helicopter comes in, um, and the guy that was flying it was a good friend of Jim's, and he knew Jim was down there. The guy came and just obliterated everything that was around him, any of the targets that were they were seeing fire come from, they just obliterated. Um, it, they removed the obstacles of, of the war so that our guys could pick up their, you know, cut their losses, so to speak, pick their men up and go. Um, but war is a horrible, horrible thing. Um, but anyway, but here's the question, number five, I want us to spend a little bit of time on. What are some of the spiritual obstacles the Spirit's power can remove in your life? And I do want to just share 
uh, Romans 8, 2 talks about the law of sin and death. The wages of sin is death, the bondage of sin. All of a sudden, the gospel removes that obstacle uh, from us um, in the sense that our sins are forgiven. Um, death is, is destroyed. Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil, death. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. Um, but I have to say, if any of you went to Greg Watson's yes. funeral last mm -hmm. week, mm -hmm. it was one of the testimonies that was given was Greg was a terrible alcoholic at a certain period of time in his life. He came to know Christ. And this is the inner strength, what Jesus did to remove that obstacle from him. He, he'd been confronted with his alcoholism. I don't know the whole story. I just know this part that he woke up in the night. He felt that he was prompted of the Holy Spirit uh, to get up and go. And he found every amount of alcohol, liquor that was in his house, whatever he drank, and he poured it all out. He got rid of it all. And you know, God gave him the strength that that was the end of his alcoholism. Okay, you hear stories like that when it comes to smoking, people having addictions, and God can remove them. Sometimes the battle's not that easy where you wake up in the night, go pour it out, and you're done. Um, but in his case, it was. And I'm sure God helps us through our, our battles, but that's one of the obstacles. And, and when we talk about the spiritual obstacle, you know, alcohol is real, but spiritually speaking, it was a terrible stumbling block to him. Um, tell you what, what are some of your thoughts on this? Infirmities. Okay, right. What about, how does he remove those? Sometimes what he helps us mm -hmm. get through. Um, any thoughts, any other thoughts, answers you may have given? For just that one verse or for all of them? All of them, any of them in that um, section. Well, the second one talks about fear and timidity. Yes. They, God doesn't give us a spirit of fear. We know where that comes from. Right. And we, that can really, Satan really uses that. You know, don't, don't speak out because those people will think, you know, so we're afraid of what other people will think. We're afraid of what's going to happen. And right. that causes us to pull back and not do, not be as bold as God intends us to be. I think you're absolutely right. I think that would be, for me, I don't fear so much for myself, but I can get pretty wound up if I think my kids are heading in the, in the wrong direction or something's not right. I can get pretty wound up over my kids. Um, but yeah, it's a bondage. Mm -hmm. So God hasn't given us that spirit of fear. I like it, but of what that power that only comes from the Holy Spirit, love and a sound mind. Anything else in this section? I wanted us to pick up a verse here too in Jeremiah, Jeremiah 29, 11 through 13. And um, I'm going to pick that up because it's such a good, good verse. Starting at 11, for I know the thoughts, in chapter 29 of Jeremiah, I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Then shall you call upon me, and you shall go and pray unto me, and I will listen to you, and you shall seek me and find me, when you shall search with me, for me, with all of your heart. Um so God is, is there, but we, we have to seek, we have to look for him. And our whole heart is to be involved in this. Apathy, half-heartedness doesn't really help us in our Christian walk or experience. Um, so sometimes one of those spiritual obstacles is just our own heart. And that has to, we have to go to the Lord and put that before him and uh, ask him to give us this, that inner strength um, 
and help as we read in this scripture this is where the word helps us when it says you shall seek me and find me when you shall search with all your heart this is something that's really important we don't want to have any lukewarm christians anything else here in this section you'd like to add i had a question sure uh, Romans 8, 26 and 27. Okay. Let me go back there. Romans 8. Romans. Yeah, I just wrote down. I'm sorry. Okay, Romans 8, 26, 26 and 27. 27. Let me go ahead and read those. Likewise, the Spirit also helps our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered, and he that searches the hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because he makes intercession for the saints according uh, to the will of God, to God. The will of is in italics in my translation, meaning the writer's translators put it in for better reading so it would read because he makes intercession for the saints according to god the will of god so what's your question i must have looked at the wrong place because i have down that jesus found fault with the people he found what fault um, so i must have read the wrong one. Oh, okay <laughs> i think Probably you did. <laughs> but what what for what scripture do you think that might be? Well, I think now that it's Romans eight six and seven because I've marked through the the twos in each of those. Uh huh. For some reason, I couldn't find them. Gotcha. That's, okay. That's my problem. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah. Does, did Jesus find fault with people? As we think of finding fault, I wouldn't. I know. I don't think so. No, but sometimes he did rebuke yes. um, people, particularly the teachers and leaders who were leading the people astray. But just to find fault, I'm not sure that that would you'd find his words fitting in that category. Okay, let's go ahead, and probably we ought to stop in three or four minutes here. Um, Let's let's switch gears to. Um, I want to talk about the Word of God as being one of our weapons. And we do go in uh, on page twenty two and twenty three, and we could just turn there and maybe camp out till we stop. Although we're going to look at two verses in Hebrews and James, but. Um, Ephesians chapter 6, we have there, there the weaponry, the, the armor that we're supposed to put on. Um, so having your loins girt about with truth, having the breastplate of what? Righteousness. Righteousness. Your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darks of, of the wicked. Tell you what, if you can hurt somebody's faith, if you can knock that shield down, you've really exposed that person, the shield of faith. Faith covers us. It, it protects us. Uh, all the fiery darts that come your way. Um, are there truths out there that shake people's faith what about our universities today oh yeah yes what we're finding is that they're teaching a lot of ungodly things mm -hmm. um and we can leave it at that but uh, we've seen young people go off to school and come back and their faith has been shipwrecked uh can you think of any of the the uh problems or things being taught today that might uh, catch some young unsuspecting Christian young person off guard evolution right off the bat 
In fact, when we had our Chinese church in Clemson, the number one thing that would hold them from accepting the scripture was the theory of evolution. Um, it took a long time to uh, talk with the Chinese to get them to, to see it a different way or see the scriptures or understand that was a real stumbling block. Is there any other thing? What are other things are being taught in our schools today? Relativity. The relativity that things are not always true and one truth to one person, isn't it? Situational yeah, that's, ethics. Yeah, and, that's true for you. That works for you. That's good. Yeah. Okay, but it doesn't work for me. Okay, so yeah, rel the relative truth. Truth is not relative. Marlo? Biblical illiteracy. Oh my, biblical illiteracy. People don't know what the Bible says on the topics. Some well, of the they things lie about what it says. People. They will say, oh, it says so and so. It's like Satan when he said, well, God didn't really mean that. He, right. You know, to get them to eat the apple. Oh, That's yeah. Not really... If you can undermine the word of God. One thing I, I do want to say about the theory of evolution what does that teach? It teaches that the world is <coughs> millions and millions of years old. And so it puts creation way back there, you know, so God is so far removed from us. Well, if you follow the genealogies between Adam and Jesus Christ, which are there from Adam to Christ, you will see that the scripture, that the Bible is, or the world, if the Bible is true, not. is not millions and millions of years old. I've always believed in a young earth since I was in high school because I sat down and I followed this genealogies and I thought, hmm, if you can go all the way from Adam to Jesus Christ in all those genealogies, I don't think the world is millions and millions of years old. Uh, but what it does, it, it removes God. It puts him way back. Like, how can we understand something from millions of years ago? It's a, it's really a truth from the devil. Go ahead, Doris. And the Bible is full of contradictions. Right. <laughs> yes. And we found that some of the foreign students were actually taught how, before they left, their government would actually teach them to ask certain questions about the Bible to cause people to stumble. Um, that was taught, again, in preparation for coming to America. Um, so... Getting undermining the word of God is has been one of Satan's tricks. Yes, I you know if you stop and think, when Adam was created, he was created as an adult. Yes, so and everything was, that was created when it was first created was created as with maturity. Yeah, maturity. Mm -hmm. Right, the rocks. You yeah. know, today I know a geologist who's um, he's an evolutionist. Um, yeah. But it's, it's a truth that I believe is very, very harmful. Something else, relative they, truth. They, they say that the light from distant stars couldn't have gotten here in the length of time that the Bible covers. Well, God created the light from those distant stars to be here. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it wasn't a problem for him. No, it wasn't. Yeah. But the, yes. Marianne? The Big Bang Theory, that mm -hmm. that's where everything came from. And I right. took There's... philosophy in college. I, sure. And I was sitting there, and the professor says, well, you know, surely there are no Christians in this class. <laughs> and you guys know how shy I am. So <laughs> I said, yeah, and I think it takes a whole lot more faith to believe all this crap you've been teaching us than to believe the Bible. <laughs> Amen. 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 <laughs> he was not very happy. I'm sure he was. And I said, how? Because the one guy said, oh, there's all these things out here, and they're floating around in a, in a tree. Like, <laughs> seriously? <laughs> You're, they yeah. had syphilis. They had weird brains. I mean, those guys that they put up yeah. as being paragons were, yeah, was, a lot of them were crazy folks. And if you look you. at them, I mean, well, they were flawed. Right. Well, I, I like the statement about evolution that if you say a prince turns into a frog, we call that a fairy tale. But if a frog turns into a prince, that's evolution. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so the theory, these are theories, but I think have infected our schools. And I think for time's sake, I'm going to have to move ahead. One quick thing, Doris. Uh, a girl said to me, 
I, I can't believe that Jesus could go 40 days without eating or drinking. Mm -hmm. And I said, tell me how nothing could produce a big bang. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Yeah. So, but, but that's what we got. And the po point we want to get here to is that the Bible is an offensive and defensive weapon um, in the hand of a Christian. And we need to know it. We need to learn from it. And I think we'll end on this one verse. And I did want to cover uh, Hebrews when it talks about prayer. Hebrews 4, 15 and 16 is a verse I've used a lot. And um, yeah, we're going to have to skip this one. Isaiah 55. Uh, I'll just say 8 through 11 is as the snow falls from heaven and the rain, it gives uh, seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So is my word. Um, it's a wonderful, wonderful passage. But uh, let's go on. The last thing, too, is uh, prayer. What encouragement do we have in these verses to use our weapon of prayer? Hebrews 4, 15 and 16. Does someone want to comment on that? Hebrews 4, 15 and 16. So let me find my Where is that? What page? Hebrews chapter 4, 15 and 16. Chapter 4. Tell you what. I've, I've got it. Let me uh, go. I'm going to start. Seeing then that we have a, a great high priest that has passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly under the throne of grace. And remember, grace is giving to someone what they don't deserve. Mercy is keeping back what they do deserve. Okay, but here, to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. I've shared this verse Many times when I've been in counseling situations, as women, sometimes, you know, people will say, oh, well, that's just an emotion. You can get over it. It'll go away. It'll whatever, whatever. But I love this verse because it says uh, that Jesus is touched with the feelings of our infirmities. There's the infirmities that we have. But then he understands and knows how we feel because he knew what it was like to be totally rejected, to be isolated, to be crucified, people spitting in his face. There is nothing we've gone through that Jesus didn't experience uh, on, on a whatever level. Uh, but this is our high priest, and uh, we love him as we go to him in prayer it tells us because of these things, because Jesus understands, we can go boldly um, to his throne. We don't have to go, um, well, of course, with hum hum humble hearts, uh, but we go to him for the help that we need. Uh, and then I just want to mention to James 5, 16 and 18 talks about the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man or woman avails much. And Elijah is that um, example that he gives. Uh, so we want to be people who are not lukewarm. We want to be armed. We want to have our armor on, Ephesians 6, as we read. Um, but tell you what, oh, sorry I talked too much. So we'll go ahead and let's pray.